Welcome to the video for lesson 11C in Problem Stats. We are going to be able to create a Venn diagram and relate it to set notation. So we've gone over lists, grids, and tree diagrams. This is another way to organize a sample space. This one deals with something called overlap. So here's a picture of a Venn diagram. You'll have some things to fill in here. So Venn diagram in the middle here, uh, it's the two circles overlapping, of course. Okay, but we're also going to include this box around the edge. All right, and we'll talk about what that is in a little bit here. Definition of a Venn diagram, uh, if you will write this down in your notes, it's a graphic organizer that shows relationships between two or more events, or sets is another way to talk about it. But we've used the vocab term events for what we've been uh, talking about so far. So. A would be one event, maybe it's having a driver's license, and B might be driving a car. So some people have a driver's license, some people have a car, some people have both. We'll have some more examples as we go. So the box around the edge, that's the whole sample space. So some people will be in A, some people will be in B, some people will be in both A and B. The box around the edge, like I was talking about, is important because there might be somebody that lives right here. They're not in A, they're not in B, they're neither. So um, maybe circle A is being a girl and circle B is having uh, brown hair. Well, maybe you're a boy with red hair, so you don't fit in either circle. Okay, So this piece is going to be a, a, an important part for us to think about today. The circles are the sets themselves or the events. And then we call this piece in the middle right here the overlap. These are the people that are in both circles. Both things are true about them. So we call it the overlap. It's what the two circles have in common. Uh, another word for it is the intersection of the two sets. So we're going to need to be able to try to relate this to uh, to what we're trying to illustrate on some problems here, finding what do the circles have in common, how many people are in each circle, things like that. All right, moving on, feel free to pause if you're not done writing that down. So for our next example, let's let A stand for all girls in class, let B stand for all the blue-eyed people in class. So kind of similar to the one I was just doing. But for this one, for our class example, a is going to be the girls, B is going to be people with blue eyes. So even if you're a boy, you could still be in the B circle since you might have blue eyes. If you're a boy with uh, brown eyes, you are in neither circle. If you are a girl with blue eyes, you're in both circles. You're in the overlap. Okay, so as we go through here then, let's look at this one first, this complement. And you might have to do the shading here yourself. Um, the complement, if you notice what's shaded here, it's everything is shaded except for the circle itself. So the out, just the box is circled. So that's saying everything that is not in A. Everything that's not in A is circled. So we have a notation for this, okay? And there's a couple ways to do it. So it could be A with a little apostrophe, or you can write A with a little C as an exponent type thing up there. So both of these mean the same thing. A with an apostrophe, I'll know what you're talking about. A with a C, I'll know what you're talking about. Okay? It means we're going to shade in everything except for the circle itself. Okay. For our class example, A was all the girls in class. So if we're talking about all the people that are not girls, we're talking about the boys. Okay. The complement of the girls is the boys. If you're not a girl, you're a boy. Okay. Um, union, so if you notice what's shaded this time, it's everything inside the two circles. We're not shading out here in the square. We're just shading everything in between. Right. So we call that everything, in, we're shading everything in A or everything in B. So this is A or B would be the way to think about this. Okay, We have a notation for this. It looks like a kind of a big capital U kind of thing. So A union B, that's what the U stands for. A, a or B, 
A union B. Okay, that means we're going to color everybody in A, everybody in B. So you'll get shaded if you are either a girl. Uh, let's look up here again so I remember. If you're a girl or if you have blue eyes. So everybody that is in either one of those uh, is colored. Everybody that's a girl and everybody that has blue eyes. Those are the people that would need to be represented. Okay. So we have complement, we have union. Lastly, we have intersection. This time we're coloring just the overlap. Okay. So we're looking at the people that have to be in both. I'm not coloring just the girls. I'm not coloring just the blue-eyed people. I'm only coloring if they are both at the same time, a girl with blue eyes. So that answers a question for later. But the way we would read this out loud would be A and B, all the people that are in A and B, right? The symbol for it is kind of, if you look at this U, we're just going to flip it upside down. So A intersection B. All right, so know what these uh, these three symbols are. I guess it's really four. There's two ways to do complement. And like we talked about intersection in our class example then, well, this is all the people that are girls and have blue eyes. In other words, blue-eyed girls. Okay, so the difference between intersection and union in this case, we over here, we could have had boys. All right, over here, we can't have boys. All right, hopefully that helps uh, with a couple of those notation uh, things here. Okay, so we won't do a lot of this, but I'll take you through some of the notation just to get some practice. The directions say shade the mini grams, the mini diagrams with the correct region described. So if you look at what they told us to do here, M and then that U looking thing, and then G. Remember that the U stands for union. So what it stands for is we're going to shade in, shade in everything that's either in the M circle or the G circle. So that would be coloring in both circles and the overlap, right? And you can probably do a better job than me on making sure that yours is all shaded in, okay? Everything in either circle, all right, including the overlap. Moving on, now we have M. And then now we have the upside down U, okay, the intersect symbol, the symbol for and. So we're coloring in everything that's in M and G. In other words, we're only coloring in things that are in M and G at the same time. So this one, we're just coloring this overlap right here. And I went outside the lines a little bit. That's why I'm not a kindergarten teacher, okay? Good there. Um, now it's going to get a little bit more complicated. Um, maybe I can zoom in so it's easier for you to see uh, on your paper there. So now we have some parentheses going on. So we have M or G in the, in the parentheses, but then this C, if you remember, means complement. So it's saying the opposite of whatever is in the parentheses. So this says I want M or G, which looked like this one, okay? But now it's saying M or G complement. So it's saying I want to color everything except for this, everything that's not this. So I'm only going to only gonna color in things that are not in either M or G. All right, in other words, I have to color in everything that is not in those circles. So over here, I'm not in M or G, over here, over here, over here. Everything except for the circles. Okay, these get complicated. Um, we're just trying to get practice with what the, sim uh, the symbols mean, what they're telling you to do. Okay, uh, let's look at this one. So there's an and symbol, I noticed that right away. So whatever I color has to be in both things. So this one right here means anything that's not in M. So I'm going to color things that are not in M, but are also in G. So I want to color the part of G that doesn't have any M in it. So if you look at this part of G, this is in the, the G circle, right? But this part is also in M. So I don't want that. What I really want is 
everything that's in G that's not in M. Okay, so the way we would write that, only things that are outside of M but inside of G. So that, like I said, it would be this kind of crescent shape here, which we would be coloring in. Okay. And the last one like this, it's flipping the where the complement part is. It looks a lot like the one before. Now the complement's here. All right, I want anything that's not in G but is also in M, so I want this crescent shape this time. Okay, I want... Right, so only things that are outside of G, but inside of M. So outside of G, but inside of M. So the kind of the mirror image of the one we did above. So we might not talk about the symbols all that much more, uh, but like the next problem you'll see, maybe they'll be kind of in the problems that you're trying to do, uh, and you, you'll just need to be able to interpret that. And that's something I can help you with. Uh, but be ready for problems that look kind of like this. All right, we have a blank Venn diagram and we have a word problem. So we're going to use the numbers that they gave us and try to figure out where they all fit. Now, there, there's a couple ways that students really mess up on this uh, consistently, so I'll try to point those areas out to you here. Uh, but let's read through the problem. It says a class of 33 students, so we're going to need to rem keep that number in mind, 33, they were surveyed and asked if they ever went to an elk time with Mr. Janan or Mr. Peshman. Uh, elk time is something that we would normally do uh, in a normal year. 18 students said they had only ever gone to Janan. 12 students said, oh, I'm going to highlight that, I'm sorry. Eight, to, eight students said they only went to Janan. Okay. 12 students said they had gone to Peshman. Uh, 10 students said they had gone to both. And then there's all these questions over here. I'm going to get to those in a minute. The first thing that I would do on a problem like this is I would fill in the numbers that they gave you, right? So we know that there has to be a total of 32. We're going to put a number kind of here, 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 and here. Those have to add up to 33, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, when we start, what I like to do is I like to see, did they tell us how many go in the overlap? If they told us that, then that's where I like to start. So right here it says 10 students said they had gone to both. All right, both is a great starting point because then you know exactly what to put here. Okay, so I'm going to put a 10 there and I'm just going to kind of do a check mark here. I, I know that I've used that 10 number. Okay. Here's where it gets a little tricky. All right, let's consider the second statement here. 12 students said they had gone to Peshman. Okay, if I, here's the common mistake from students. Oh, maybe I should do this first. All right, let's make this the Janan circle and this the Peshman circle. Okay, so a lot of students will read the second statement. 12 students said they went to Peshman, and they'll put a 12 right here. This is a mistake. Okay, I'll show you why. If this is the circle, if I have it like that, there's really a total of 10 plus 12 or 22 people that went to Peshman. But there's not 22 people that went to Peshman, there's only 12. So our numbers have to reflect that. So we need to make these two numbers, 10 and something, add up to a total of 12. So I really need a two right there. Because now in this circle, we have 10 plus two, which is gonna be equal to 12. Okay, so that's a big difference here. Now you don't always have to think about that. If you see a number, I or, sorry, a word, I highlighted a word right here that said only. If you see that type of, of wording on these, it says 18 students only went to Janan. That means they only went to Janan, which means they never went to Peshman, which means I don't need the 10 to count in that part of the circle. So there's this many, or this portion of the circle is going to have to be my 18, because these are the people that went to Janan, but not Peshman. Since they only went to Janan, I can't count any of that overlap. So I am going to take the full 18 right here. So that's a difference. If it says only or not, look out for that type of thing. 
All right, now this is where the 33 comes in. We haven't used that yet. If you take your 18, your 10, and your 2, all right, we're at a total of 30 students. There's a, uh, a total of 33 that were in the survey. So what that tells me, I'm three short, right? Well, that three comes out into the box. So there must be three people in the survey that never went to Janan and never went to Peshman. Okay, so I always leave that number in the box, in the outside box for last. There'll be some leftovers that you didn't use. The reason that I do, and sorry, I forgot I was checking these kind of along the way. I should have checked off that we used 12 and 18. Now we use the 33. Okay, if you do the box, if you fill in the picture first, then it, it goes really well when you answer the questions on the side. Because now... I just so n is just going to stand for the number. All right. So this is saying the number of people in the G circle. So they want the number of people in the G circle. Here's the G circle. So that is a total of 18 plus 10 or 28. Okay. The number of people that are not in the P circle in, Pesh, in Peshman. So the, the amount of people that are not in the Peshman circle. So these 18 people are not in the Peshman circle. Also, these three people are not in the Peshman circle. So the other 12, the 10 and the 2, are in the Peshman circle. So this one is just 18 plus 3, or 21. Okay. Uh, the number of people that are G and P, Janan and Peshman, that's the overlap section. So these are the people that have gone to both. That's going to be 10. And lastly, uh, G or P. All right, these are the people that are in Janan or Peshman. That's this circle and this circle with the overlap all three of these numbers, it's everything except for the three, right? So we already added that up down here. That's 18 plus 10 plus 2. There's 30 people that were in Janan or Peshman. All right, this last question, what is the symbolism for the kids who didn't go to either one? So that's like the symbolism for getting this three down here, all right? The symbolism for people that didn't go to either one Okay, would be, well, here's what either one would be, right? Uh, hang on. This would be, they went to Janan or Peshman, right? We want everything except for that. So either a C or an apostrophe would be fine there. Maybe I'll put an apostrophe because before we were looking at the ones with a C. Okay, so that would be the symbolism for a kid who didn't go to either one. They didn't go to Janan or Peshman. Okay. Last thing I want to do on the notes today is give you a chance to try the same thing. Okay, I would love if you tried this one. So you're going to pause the video, give it a shot. Really, if you want, just pause the video until you have all this stuff filled in. Because you don't want to answer these questions until you know that this stuff is correct. Okay, so start by doing this. Pause the video, read through the problem, fill in that picture and then click play, resume it, and then we'll go over this stuff together. All right, go ahead and pause right now. All right, so check your work. Uh, it doesn't matter if you put the cat circle on this side. Just make sure that if you put the cat circle, then you have the six over there, or make sure that uh, it ends up being the same thing. All right, but just real quickly, again, I would start with the both statement. If they give you one, this is a dog and a cat, so it, there's 10 people that are in both. Uh, if you see the word only, that's an easy one to start with. So eight only had a dog, so that's why there's an eight right here. And then 16 students total said they had a cat. Didn't say only a cat, it just said had a cat. So that means this whole circle needs to make 16. Since we already have a 10 right here, that's why this has to be a six. If you take your eight, 10, and six, that adds up to 24. There's 28 students in the class, which is why we have a four for our leftover, 28 minus 24. 
All right, so now we can answer our questions. This part should be the fastest part. This, the part that you really want to be careful with, make sure you have the picture right. Uh, and if it's something where you're in person with me, I can always check your picture and see if you got the same as me. All right, the number of people that had a cat, that's what the C means right here, just number of people in the cat circle, that would be 16. That's 10 plus 6 or 16. Okay, the number of people that do not have a dog, didn't have a dog, Okay, that's all the people that are not in the dog circle. So there's a group of six people not in the dog circle here and a group of four people that are not in the dog circle here. Right? So let's see. Uh, there's six plus four then. Or there's ten people that did not have a dog. The six people from only cat and the four people from neither. Third one is the and problem. That's the overlap. And means overlap. So there's 10 people in there. We're getting a lot of 10s here, it looks like. Uh, and then the last one is C or D. That's all of this stuff, not the four. So we already added those up too. But just to show some work, that's 8 plus 10 plus 6, and we get 24. All right. So now... We are into the end of the lesson. All right, that's everything you need to know about Venn diagrams. When you go into the homework, do your best to understand the notation, draw those pictures, and let me know what issues that you might have. All right, thanks for watching. Go ahead and get started on the homework.